Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Tim Scallon, registered dietitian and nutritionist. And here in the Pine Forest near Lufkin and Nacogdoches, Texas, is a little place called Pine Creek Country Inn. And in their kitchen is a French gentleman using fresh ingredients to prepare some delightful meals in the French tradition. So I'm thinking this is an excellent opportunity for us to explore how the French culinary tradition has influenced our own American cuisine. A little later, some friends will join me for dinner to enjoy a fine dining experience here at Pine Creek Country Inn. But first, allow me to introduce owner and operator, Miss Lisa Luba. Bonjour, Lisa. Bonjour, Tim. Welcome to Pine Creek Country Inn. Well, thank you, thank you. So, Lisa, I'm I'm online and I'm looking at TripAdvisor and I'm reading these raving reviews about Pine Creek Country Inn, and these are people from all over the country. Exactly. We're so excited. With this we're getting reservations from France, Germany, Italy. We're elated. Whoa. Well, so who would have thought people coming right to East Texas? Who would have thought? <laughs> well, okay. So when I'm here, I'm looking around and I see all this wonderful art. Tell me about that. Um, I have a great appreciation of art, and we have art from a French artist, Simone. We have some from a Colorado artist. We have one from Dallas. So we like art very much, that's, yes. That's really cool. Yes. Okay, well tell us a little bit about Pine Creek Country Inn. Okay, Pine Creek Country Inn is located in the deep East Texas Piney Woods between Lufkin and Nacogdoches. We have 17 guest rooms. We have a restaurant, we have a spa, um, we have fishing, we have pool, jacuzzis, we have it all for church and family retreats. So you're not just a restaurant? Oh no, not by any means. We're a full service restaurant and hotel. Well, I gotta come back to this art because I'm, I, I can't help but notice this painting. Yes. Tell me about this. This painting has great meaning for myself and my husband, Jean. This is his family home in southern France, and this was also done by the, by the French artist, Simone. That is so cool. Yes, it's well, beautiful. Well, speaking of Jean, uh, where is he? Yeah, I believe he's in the kitchen actually preparing something for you. Let's go see. Let's go. Bonjour, Monsieur Jean. Comment allez-vous? Très bien, merci et vous-même. Très bien, très bien, merci. And I'd like to thank you, Jean, for inviting us into your kitchen here. So Lisa tells me that you're going to prepare for us a traditional French dish. What is it? Coco vin. Coco vin. Okay, coco vin. So this, this name translates to? Rooster in wine sauce. Rooster in wine sauce. Okay, so is it fair to say then, for, for those who don't know the traditional dish coco vin, that this is really a stewed chicken with wine? It yeah, would, it can be. Yeah, okay. But this one is cooked according to traditional rules? Absolutely. Okay, okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I have my chicken which is cut up here. Yeah. It's a six pound chicken. Yep. If you can get bigger, get bigger because obviously it takes longer to cook and it brings the flavor. So I'm okay. just going to season it with pepper and, and notice that I even have a uh, backbone in there, which you don't eat, yeah. but it's just for the flavor. Once, the, once it's cooked, you can take it out. So the bone actually adds flavor to it. Right. And absolutely. then also I noticed that in this dish you've got uh, skin on, yes, the chicken. Yeah. Now, it, for the viewers who, and that's traditional because in the traditional way, you would, you, the. <laughs> The rule is you want flavor, you're not as concerned about right, health. Right. But for our viewers who want to reduce the fat on this, this is yeah. already a very lean dish, but yeah. if you wanted to, yeah. uh, you could remove the skin from the you, chicken. You sure now the only downside to that is, is we would have to throw something away unless you happen to have a French poodle. Right. And if you had a French poodle, you can eat it. Yeah, yeah maybe true. saute it in some butter with right. a little salt and pepper. Yes. No garlic. Yeah. And then your poodle would love you forever. Right. Okay, so, sorry. Okay, Jean. so now I'm going to add my oil, which is uh, warming up here. Good. I'm going to put the onions, which yeah. I'm using regular onions, okay. very, very thick. Yes. Because pure onions don't really cook inside. Yes. And the taste is not there. Oh, okay. So, uh, so. So in, a, in some recipes, you would, you would find pearl onions. Yes. But in this recipe, you prefer the, the right. whole onion. Yeah. OK. And I'm going to raise the bronze yeah. a little bit. And I noticed that you have these onions uh, 
cut very thick. Very they're, thick. they're not diced. No, because they don't. Dis I don't like them to disappear. I like for you to be able to taste yes. the uh, brown um, onion. Yes. Right? So, so like uh, like in a stew, you want your in a stew, you want things cut thick. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's the right. only one way that you can really get the flavor out of it. Well, and so go ahead. I'm going to add this chicken in there. Yeah. 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 I'm smelling those onions. My French poodle Babette would love this dish. Yeah. Now, now Jean, you're from the south of France. Is this not correct? Yes. Yeah. And uh, and this dish, this is a, uh, a a dish from southern France. No. Oh, uh, no, not really. No. Uh, they, they make it uh, with red wine in uh, Burgundy. In Burgundy, okay, with red wine. That's okay. Really, uh, that's probably a dish from the. Uh, Parisian version. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So, and now we need to, to get warm, so that's, that's going to take a while. Yeah. You know? So, Lisa, to what do you attribute the success of your restaurant here? Uh, I think it has to do with the fresh ingredients and the preparation. Okay, so preparation or technique, exactly. which is which is really the traditional uh, French way, French huh? way. Uh -huh. knowing what to do with those fresh exactly. ingredients. Okay. Well, Jean, I, I noticed that in uh, looking at recipes for coco vin, some people use red, some white. Tell me why you use white in this dish. Well, the original recipe is with red wine. Okay. It's from Burgundy, France. Yep. But it's kind of an heavy dish, and somebody thought of making it much lighter. Yes. Which is a good idea. So they use white wine and a little bit of tomato. Okay, so the red wine is heavier, the white wine is a lighter dish, right. better for summertime? Yeah, summertime is much better. Yeah. The red wine is more of a healthy dish for wintertime. Yes, yes. Right? Okay. Okay, so what's next? Next is, um, I've sorted the, the chicken, it's all brown, as you okay. can see. Yeah. Actually, the bottom of the pan is burning right now. Okay. And now I'm going to eat the Use a mushroom, which again are very, very thick, cut for flavor. So, so I'm going to do all those mushrooms in there. So these mushrooms, about, I'm sorry, go ahead. About a cup and a half. Okay. Uh, for the chicken, right? So, okay, so, so these, so these mushrooms uh, are not sliced thin. That's what I would have no, expected. They are very thick. And, and I'm using this, uh, this mushrooms because that's the only mushroom I can find. Here. But obviously, if you have some good mushrooms like uh, uh, mousseron or something like that, yeah, it's yeah, much, it much yeah. better. And now so I'm going to put um, a, a pinch of garlic in there. Okay. okay. Fresh garlic. Yeah, fresh garlic. Yep. Pinch in there. And I'm going to stir it a little bit more. And you can see the bottom of the pan is, is burned. Okay. See? Which is okay because the white one is going to lift all these uh, sediments and make it a great rich sauce. Actually, that browning is just adding flavor to the dish, yeah, no? Exactly, yeah. So I put some bay leaves, about five, six. A bay lot leaves. of bay leaf. Yeah, I, I okay. like bay leaves. Okay, five, a lot of, of bay leaf, okay. Right. okay. Then I will add the tomatoes, Yeah. which is about one tomato, one, one large tomato. So it's not enough. I mean, it's not a lot. It's just, no. a, it's just a little. No, that would serve about four people. Okay. okay. You can see it's a very simple dish. Anybody can do that. Okay. Right? Yes, now yes. Now I'm just going to add the wine, which yep. uh, any kind of dry wine would do it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Dry doesn't Chardonnay. have to be dry. expensive. No, but it has to be a Chardonnay. Okay? A Chardonnay, yes. okay. Uh, okay. Now you can make it with sweet wine too. Yeah. It exists, but it's a matter of taste. Okay. And okay. it's not bad with, white wine, uh, with sweet wine either. Yeah. But I put about one and a half. Bottles. Yes. One and a half bottles. Yeah, for that, okay. uh, for four people, six uh, uh, six pound chicken, and one and a half. Uh, what you have to do is to cover the chicken. Okay. All right. Okay. So there's no water or broth on this. It's know. all wine. Yeah, all wine. Okay, and this is a more uh, traditional, huh? Yeah. Okay. Traditional. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now it's all in there. Uh, I have to boil it, and once it's boiled, I reduce. After it simmers for an hour, I will just add some flowers to thicken the sauce. Okay. And that's all. That's, that's simple. And, and then it's done. And, and then once you have uh, the flour, it needs to be another 30 minutes. Yes, just so to cook the starch. The whole cooking time is about one hour and a half. 
Okay. Okay. You know, Jean, I can't help but notice your pepper mill here. This is this is a neat. Uh, th this looks like an antique. I don't know if it is or not. Well, it could be an antique. It's a coffee grinder. It's actually. a coffee grinder. Right. Okay. Because, because paper mill takes too long. So yeah. I put. I fill up this paper grinder with uh, with fresh pepper corn. Yeah. And it's it's the best thing you can do. Well, I couldn't help but notice that. Uh, Jean, thank you for uh, for teaching us about Coco Vin. And you know, Lisa, I bet my guests have I arrived. I bet they are. You I'll go, go check. check. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh -huh. French cuisine has significantly shaped how we think of and talk about food. In fact, some would say that French cuisine has had such an impact on Western cooking that its vocabulary has penetrated every level of society. The French were the first people in the Western world to conceptualize food as more than simply sustenance. To the French, food is art. They invented cooking methods and dining traditions that are still in wide practice today. In the process, they permanently impacted American culinary tradition. The word cuisine is French. Common menu terms like au gratin, puree, souffle, and a la carte are part of our American lexicon. American culinary professionals use terms like bouquet garni, déglacé, flambé, frappé, fricassé, mirepoix, chiffonade, and julienne. If you watch cooking shows like Memorial Cooking Innovations, you've already started learning and using this culinary lingo. And your friends are totally impressed when you casually throw out, oh yes, I cut the basil in a chiffonade and then you get to explain to them what chiffonade means and that you learned it on memorial cooking innovations. At the end of the Middle Ages, French cooks began replacing the strongly flavored medieval sauces with milder, more complex sauces. They also ceased the medieval practice of adding sweet flavors to savory dishes like meats. French chefs emphasized the taste of food over its healthful properties, and this became known as Nouvelle Cuisine. Vegetable dishes, thought of as peasant food, became increasingly popular with the upper classes, and people began to designate special rooms in their homes simply for the purpose of dining. Yep, you guessed it. We get our present day dining rooms from the French culinary tradition. In the 1700s, the French started using forks and plates. It wasn't long before people were going to the first restaurants. Restaurant is another French word. In early French cuisine, many different dishes would be prepared and they would all be brought to the king's table in unison. This way of presenting food was named service en confusion, or service in confusion. One of the defining characteristics of a French meal today is that there are several courses served in succession. This concept was introduced at Versailles by King Louis XIV. Instead of allowing the food served in confusion as before, the Sun King encouraged the servants to bring one dish at a time. And that's where we get the seven course meal. For centuries, French food has symbolized high quality cuisine in American culture. So high-end restaurants, whether they serve French food or not, often hire classically trained chefs. And classically trained here means trained in the French tradition. By the way, chef is a French word. Infuse, saute, braise are all culinary terms that we use today from that tradition. Now in American cuisine, we find bisques, Bechamel sauce, canapes, compotes, pâté, consommé, terrines, and tarts. In Louisiana, we see heavy French influence in Cajun and Creole cuisine with terms like olé, étoffé, beignet, and en papillon. As a registered dietitian and nutritionist, it seems I'm always talking about food. One might think that I would grow weary of the subject, En contraire, for me, the endless exploration of food and cooking, like what we do here on Memorial Cooking Innovations, is one of the joys of life. Le joie en vie. 
With me here is Miss Patricia Jones, and Patricia, you and I are old friends and work colleagues here at uh, CHI St. Luke's Health. And so, how many years have we been working here together at the Medical Center? Well, I've been Administrator of Home Care since 1992. I was going to tell you, I, I was going to tell you not to answer that. You and I are just babies. That's just right. Babies. You were a teenager no, when I was you a started. Baby. <laughs> you may have been a teenager. I was a baby. And you haven't changed one bit. <laughs> Good answer, Tim. Good answer. <laughs> well, okay, so Patricia, since we're learning about how the French culinary tradition has influenced American cuisine, mm -hmm. I wanted to demonstrate how to make a basic vinaigrette dressing. Now, you know vinaigrette, that's a French word. Well, you know a lot of French words, Well, Tim. yes, yes, oui, je parle un peu français. Uh, and so, okay, so this dressing is so simple, anybody can make it. Well, thanks a lot. It, <laughs> even you, Patricia. <laughs> Even me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so this dressing has four ingredients. Okay. It has olive oil, vinegar, pepper, and salt. Okay. Now, we're always going to use extra virgin olive oil because uh, it has more flavor, and a vinaigrette is, that's just the dressing you use. Now, some other dressings might use different oils, but, but for this, you need extra virgin olive oil. Extra virgin means extra flavor. Now, we could vary the vinegar so this is a red wine vinegar. We could use a white wine. We could use a balsamic. That gives it a good Mediterranean flavor. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to use the red wine today because I like it. Uh, always salt and pepper. Uh, I like coarse ground black pepper. You, I, I see. You, 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 yeah. you know what you know that you know about that too. You actually have in your heritage some Louisiana. I do. Which also has heavy heavy French influence. Yes, my mother was raised in Villeplat. Okay, so doesn't get much more Cajun than that. That's right. Okay, so so I could tell when you saw that you you're you're a coarse black pepper people uh, person. Okay, so what we want to do is I've got a bowl. You, will you help me make this? Oh sure. Okay. All right. So we're going to start now in this dressing. Hold that for me. This is a very important task. Uh -huh, it's tough. Okay. In this, you know, if I wanted to make this dressing in quantity, well, you know, I'd use something like this. You can get this at, on the salad dressing aisle at Brookshire's or at any grocery store. Uh, but I like it because see how it's graduated mm. with how much uh, vinegar, water, and oil to use. Now, you don't have to be exact on that, but it just gives you a guide, okay? So if you're gonna make this in quantity, this is a good tool to use. But I wanna show how making salad dressing is not a big deal. In fact, let's just pretend that I'm gonna have a, a side salad with my lunch. And so I'm gonna start with a little bit of oil. It doesn't have to be much, okay? And then I'm gonna add some of this red wine vinegar. You notice that the dietitian is not measuring. Can you believe that? I'm shocked. I, shocked. <laughs> Me too. But you know, this kind of thing. Okay, now stir that around real good and uh -huh. fast so that you really, that vinegar and, and water doesn't like to mix, but if you do it fast, uh, it'll mix up for you. Okay. And then I'm just going to put just a pinch of salt. You know, a little bit of salt uh, brings out the flavor. Too much covers it up. Okay, a little bit of black pepper, doesn't that coarse black pepper add eye appeal? Okay, and now if we wanted to make just like the classic uh, mixed salad that here in the States we Americans like to eat, that's going to be a lettuce, tomato, cucumber salad, right? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so that's what we'll do today. So I'm going to do the cucumber first. Hold on to that spoon because you're going to need it in just a moment. And this isn't a lot, so I'm just going to do about that much. All right, and whenever you're doing this dressing, let me just peel this. Now, you know, we can eat the peel of the cucumber, but sometimes they're a little tough. This one's a little tough, and I don't know. I, I eat the peel on a lot of fruit, but on cucumber, I like it peeled, so that's what I'm doing with that. All right, and then we're just going to cut this nice and easy. Bite-sized pieces is always a good rule. Just put a few of those in there, get them out of the way. And then the reason that I'm adding the cucumber first is because as you're making this dressing, now stir those around. Okay. As you're making this dressing, those cucumbers are starting to soak up that delicious fresh dressing mm. that we just made. 
Got aroma tomato. Yeah, it's kind of going away. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll notice that because the cucumber is porous and so it'll, it'll soak it up. Now let's add a little bit of this tomato. It's just a single uh, dressing, uh, salad, so it doesn't have to be a lot. Okay, stir that around. Stir that in. Yep. And then uh, I'm going to take some, uh, some uh, romaine lettuce. I'm going to cut these big ends off. Does it need any other trimming? I've already washed it. It needs a little trimming. It's got a little rust right here on the end, so I'm going to take that off. Okay. Now, I, I started talking about how I'm making this just as a side salad, but what if I wanted to take this for my lunch uh, to work tomorrow? Well, then instead of making it in that bowl, I'd just do the same thing in this one. Mm -hmm. Make the dressing, do the tomato and, and uh, cucumber, put it in the fridge, and then I'd, I'd cut my lettuce, wash and cut the lettuce, and put it in a Ziploc, and then carry it like that so it doesn't get all yeah. wilted. Yeah. Uh, you ever do that at work? You ever carry your lunch? No. No? Well, I actually like carrying my lunch because it gives me a little bit more control over sodium and quality. You mm -hmm. know, I know what I'm getting. Now, this is probably going to be enough. Let's just see. Watch that knife. It, could, it probably, it'll take it, a won't it? A little bit more. Think yeah. it'll take it? Okay. All right. Let's see if that's enough. Yeah, probably so. Okay, so in this dressing, now just toss that around. That's mm -hmm. right. This is a very important task. I couldn't have done this without oh, yeah. you. Uh huh. That's all right. He can go over here. Okay, so think of a salad as a place to combine flavors and textures. Well, what makes salad such a wonderful food? is there's an endless array of different ingredients. It doesn't have to be this mixed salad. It could be different lettuces. It could be, uh, doesn't have to be cucumber. You know, you can make a salad out of anything. You could add onion to this, might be good. Mm -hmm. uh, you like fresh onion? Mm -hmm. Oh, me too. Okay, uh, you could also add uh, nuts or seeds. Like, for example, I like uh, sunflower seeds. Oh, yeah. Okay. Add those, or okay. olives would be good in this. Mm -hmm. You know what I've recently found? What? Marinated garlic. Olives or marinated garlic? Garlic, garlic. Oh. And I just happened to bring some because I'm, I'm so excited uh -huh. about them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is, because, you know, garlic is a little strong, these are surprisingly, they're not as strong as you would think, but because they are a little strong, they've been marinated in oil. And in fact, you can do this at home. If you have a thing of olive oil that's almost done and you want to infuse it with garlic, then that would, be a, uh, that would flavor your olive oil. But you could also use the garlic in something like this. Oh. Adds just a real good flavor. Let me get this towel right here. And then also, to top this off, if we wanted to, just a little bit of uh, shredded Parmesan. Uh -huh. You know, just makes a nice, uh, pretty and it adds a sp splash of flavor and then just a final touch you know remember <laughs> food is art oh no? yeah oh okay. yeah and this is especially true this is again something that we get from the french uh tradition, tradition. food is not just sustenance it's art so let's just do for eye appeal just a little bit of this doesn't that just look good enough to eat delicious okay and so you see how easy it is to make fresh food it is delicious. Why don't we do this and more fun. often? It is fun. Yeah. yeah. And, all, and, and so all of this started with a basic vinaigrette. I want, Lisa, our viewers to know a little bit about your menu. And I'm looking at this menu and I'm seeing a lot of French items, like, for example, this uh, roasted young rabbit Dijonet. In yes. French, that would be la lapin. La la pain oh, really? Journée. See, oui, oui, I, oui. I like that. Yeah, and uh, and you have your au gratin uh, dauphinois potatoes. Yes. And, I, and I've had those, and they are wonderful. I don't know if they fit on a low-fat yeah, diet. Yeah, we don't take out the fat and calories, but mm -hmm. they're there. Okay. You so have a, a very good beef bourguignon. Yes, sir. And also, I see on this 
this assiette de charcuterie, which is really a plate of cold cuts, is exactly. what that translates uh -huh. to. And that includes some interesting things. Tell us about that. Right, it has your, your prosciutto mm -hmm. ham, mm -hmm. it has your salamis, mm -hmm. and it also has my homemade country pate that I do make here at Pine Creek. You make a pate Absolutely. from scratch. Absolutely, I just started, okay, I'm very you, excited. Okay, you have to tell us about that. Okay, it's just simply, it's not the real fattening pate that you get, it's mm -hmm. made with chicken and pork. Okay? Not, not Organ meats. Not organ meat. Okay. The okay. meat itself, okay, with brandy or cognac, whatever I'm in the mood for, mm. um, with shallots and seasonings, and it's baked and then it's chilled and it's sliced and it's served on this plate with cornichons and French bread. You know, this is an example of a pate that would fit on a healthy diet. Yes, it would. So, it, you could do that, yes. So just like the Coco Vad, this is another healthy selection. Exactly. So you can get healthy food, even French cooked, and that's something people don't know. They don't understand, it's true, you can. Well, I'm delighted that I can I come and order uh, homemade pate. Exactly, and with a nice salad and your pate, you've got a full dinner and it's not fat, fat, fat. You have to come see this place. Yes, you do. Although American service may not include seven courses, our practice of an appetizer, salad, main course, and dessert is a carryover from the traditional French service. So, are you all ready to have our main course? Sure. I think Jean is prepared. Okay, Jean. It smells wonderful. Today, we've learned that you don't have to go to France to get good French cooking. Fresh ingredients and uh, learned techniques are essential to good cooking, both in the home and dining out. Our American cuisine is heavily influenced by the French tradition. Even French cuisine, known for its rich sauces, has healthy choices such as this delicious coco vin. We'd like to say a special merci beaucoup to Lisa and Jean Luba of Pine Creek Country Inn for sharing their culinary experience with Memorial Cooking Innovations and for allowing us into your kitchen. And for you all, uh, I also want to say thank you for joining us on Memorial Cooking Innovations and for helping us to change the world one bite at a time. Memorial Cooking Innovations is made possible through the generous efforts of Brookshire Brothers, a celebration of family and community, CHI St. Luke's Memorial, the Polk Education Center, Sodexo Food Service, and the City of Lufkin, KLTX Channel 15.